All right, today what I wanna do is I wanna talk about sound intensity. And really what I wanna do is talk about how sound changes as we move away from a sound source, like a speaker. And to do that, what I wanna do is compare and contrast two different situations. I wanna look at a rock or a pebble, which we're gonna drop into a pond. And I wanna compare that to sound, which is going to emanate away from a speaker. When we drop a pebble into a pond, it's gonna hit the water and produce a wave. Now you'll remember a wave is simply a transfer of energy. And this wave occurs because the pebble, when it strikes the water, has some kinetic energy and that energy gets transferred into the water. So this energy is going to be distributed around this wave. Now as the wave propagates outward, the wave is going to become bigger or larger in circumference. Now the energy of that wave will not have changed. Whatever energy it started with, it will still have. But that energy is going to be distributed over a greater circumference. And as the wave grows even bigger, that energy is gonna be distributed over an even larger circumference. So really what I wanna to do to help us understand sound is look at what's gonna to happen to the height of this wave as this wave radiates outward. Now because the amount of energy which is in a wave affects its amplitude or its height in this case, as the energy is spread out over a greater and greater distance, the height of the wave is going to decrease. And to understand why that is, I wanna take a look at a tiny little slice of this entire circumference of wave. So let's look at just a little bit of this wave right here. There's a certain amount of energy in this little part of the wave. Now the energy in that tiny little part of the wave is going to be proportional to the total energy E, which we're dealing with, divided by the circumference of the wave. And because this is a circular wave on the surface of a pond, we know the circumference is going to be two pi r. Now, as this wave moves outward, so what this means is as the wave moves outward, the amount of energy which passes through this little slice of wave which we're dealing with is going to decrease because that energy is going to have to be spread out over a greater radius. Hence, we will see a smaller amplitude or height of the wave as the wave propagates or radiates outward. So how does this help us understand what's happening to sound as we move farther away from or closer towards a sound source? Now I want you to realize when a speaker produces sound, that sound radiates outward much like waves on a pond. So this sound, just like a water wave, is going to radiate outward. Realize a speaker gives a sound wave a certain amount of energy, so the energy in the wave here is going to be equal to the energy in the wave when it gets out here to a greater radius. There's one major difference between sound radiating outward from a speaker and water waves propagating out across the surface of a pond. And that is that as water waves move across the surface of a pond, they're only moving in two dimensions. A, as I've drawn it, a vertical and horizontal axis, or as you'd actually see it, just, just the plane of the pond. Water waves don't go downward into the water. They stay on the surface. Sound waves, on the other hand, those radiate outward in all directions. And so here we had a certain amount of energy distributed around a circumference. Whereas here we are going to see this energy is not distributed around the circumference of a circle in 2D. We're going to see that it is distributed in what is effectively a sphere of energy, which is radiating outward in three dimensions. So this energy is going to be distributed over the area of this sphere. Now you remember the area of a sphere is four pi r squared. 
So much like what we saw over here, the where the height of the water wave decreased, what we're gonna find here is there's less energy striking a certain size surface, like your eardrum, if you move farther away from the source. And that is given by this equation right here. The energy is spread out over a greater area. So how does this lead us to sound intensity and what we actually hear? And to understand the intensity of a sound, what I want to do is take a look at a one square meter surface a certain distance away from the speaker. Think of this one square meter surface like a giant ear. And when this square is close to the speaker, there's going to be a certain amount of sound which strikes the surface and passes through it. Now imagine we were to take this surface and then move it farther away from the speaker. If we were to move this one square meter surface farther away from the speaker, say twice as far away, we're going to see less energy actually have to pass through this one square meter surface. And that's given by this equation right here. Now when dealing with sound, we don't talk about sound as having a certain amount of energy per wave, that gets to be inconvenient. So what we do is we talk about the power of the sound source. So when we actually go through and define intensity of sound, we say the intensity of the sound is the power of the source over 4 pi r squared. And so this equation allows us to relate the intensity of sound which is striking a surface to its distance from the source. Here we have the power of the sound source. Here we've got the distance between the observer and the source itself. Now this intensity is measured in watts over the units of our denominator, that's meters squared. Now, of course, your eardrum is much smaller than this one square meter surface, uh, but what this does is gives us a way to understand just how much energy is passing through a surface at a given distance. Now, one thing you'll notice is as we double the distance between the source and the observer, according to this equation, the intensity is going to go down by a factor of four. And now I understand that may seem strange because if you get twice as far away from a speaker, it doesn't sound four times quieter. But the reason behind that has to do with decibels and how we perceive sound, and that's an issue for another day. So on that note, that's all for now.